YouTube, DJ's here, back at you with a more chill DJ's BrewTube beer review. And today, I've completed my work. I had my workout. It's later in the night. It's getting cold down here in the dungeon now, as you see by the sweater. And I said, you know what? I haven't had a nice stout for a while, and I need some Russian Imperial Stout action in my life. And what am I going to do to fill my life with Russian Imperial Stout happiness? I'm going to go to Great Lakes Brewing Company out of Cleveland, Ohio, U.S. of A. Yay, yay. And I'm going to have their Blackout Stout. Now, this is a Russian Imperial Stout. It's available starting in November, kind of like somewhere around there, I suppose. And it's a seasonal beer. It's 9% ABV and 50 IBUs. Now, this particular beer I got from my good buddy Tony at uh, Mediocre Reviews and Awesome Brews. Now, this beer is also a year old at this point. Why? Because I forgot to drink it and it was in the beer cellar and that's how it goes sometimes. But, you know what, it's a Russian Imperial Stout. It's 9% ABV, so it's going to be just fine. Now, why the name Blackout Stout? Well, you can tell by looking at this bottle, it's a really dark ass beer and the bottle looks completely black with this whole label combo. But, it's because in 2003 there was a big power blackout in the Northeast and they lost power. So there you go, Blackout Stout. Great Lakes tend to name all their beers for different occurrences that happen around the Great Lakes and their region and after ships and all that kind of good stuff. We like that. It's nostalgic and craft beer is kind of a nostalgic thing, isn't it? So, this particular beer, for malt-wise, is using uh, two-row crystal, black malt, and I think roasted barley, something like that. And for hops, um, they're using Simcoe and, oh, what was the other one? Northern Brewer, I think. So, it's a pretty straightforward beer, except for that Simcoe side. That's a non-traditional bittering hop, so I don't know after a year if that bittering hop is going to show through as much and it's going to be more roast bittering, but you know what? It is Russian Imperial Stout, so how much hops do you really taste anyway, unless you're talking about a beer like Night Stalker from Goose Island, which is basically a black IPA on steroids. So let's get the cap popped on this bad boy, get it in my lovely heavy sea snifter, and see what's going down with this one. Oh, nice hiss off the top. Plenty of smoke. Let's get in this snifter. I am ready for a snout, uh, stout. I can smell the malt wafting off this bad boy from here. Let's see if we get a little elevation with this year old 9%er will give us there. We go, look at that, guys. Lovely, chocolatey looking head, real dark khaki bubbles. A little bit soap sudsy at the top, real tight around the corners. We got a solid one finger head on this one. The body. As the name suggests, is absolutely black. This is blackout stout. There's no light coming through this bad boy. When I swirl it, instant glass lacing, plenty of alcohol lakes wafting down this glass. Man, it's like alcohol curtains, actually. Wow, I'm ready for a beer like this, man. It's right at the right temperature. Feels about like 50 degrees. Let's get a nose on this and start the chill session, guys. Man, that's nice. You greet it right up front with dark chocolate coffee, caramel, deep roasted barley, a little bit of that hop is actually in there, mm, man it just smells like dessert in a glass, I'm a big stout fan as you guys know if you've watched enough DJ's brew tube, so is my mate Johnny, and man this one's really smelling nice, mm, the main aroma I'm getting is dark chocolate, and it's that dark chocolate like you've taken like real dark cacao chocolate like 70% and melted it down in coffee, and that like aroma combination is what's really greeting you, and the back up to that is that caramel, man, that's what a stout's supposed to smell like. Let's get a taste on this and see what, what's up with the blackout stout. Cheers. Wow. Man. Oh. That's nice. Big roast. A bit of the hoppiness actually in there, which I'm surprised after a year. They must have put a big amount of Sim Simcoe and that Northern Brewer in here, but man, you got chocolate, caramel, deep roast coffee, and that's the main aftertaste is that deep roast coffee. Um, the body is sort of, I guess, medium to medium full, somewhere in between there. It has a good coating effect, but it's not a really heavy bodied beer. Mm -hmm. This particular type of Russian Imperial Stout, I kind of classify these Russian Imperial Stouts in like two, I guess, eras. This is sort of an era one Russian Imperial Stout. It's got big flavor. It's got, um, you know, 
big, great aftertaste, really well hidden alcohol, goes down smooth, carbonation spot on and all that, but it's not real big body. The second generation is maybe a little higher alcohol and bigger body, more syrupy almost, more mouth coating, but there's a place in the world for this style of stout also. Um, I am getting a warming effect going down in the chest on this, but um, the alcohol is really well integrated in this. I'm not sure what it is fresh because we don't get this beer around here and I had to trade for it. And I also forgot it was in my cellar, but <laughs> I guess that's a personal problem, isn't it? But really tasty stout. It's hitting all the notes where it should be on the stout. Let me take a final taste here and give you a verdict. Nice. Um... Still no alcohol taste as it's warmed up a little bit while we're talking here. Man, really well put together beer. You can tell it's made of quality ingredients. So, what do the other guys think about this? Great beer is given a 99, which is really high A-plus grade. I don't know if I can go with that. Beer Advocate's given an 84, which is just into the A range. I mean, 94. And I think I'm going to go with the 94 on this myself. I think it's a like a actually a 93. It's an A-minus beer. It's a really good beer, but the... The thinness of the body kind of lets it down a little bit. I think it could use just a slight more bit of viscosity to it. And in this style or this kind of generation of stuff, that is possible as well. But it's still a really good beer. I would buy it again. The date's on the bottle. And you can tell it's made from great ingredients. And it's another quality Great Lakes Brewing Company product. What can you say? So, now that we've flapped our gums so much, we got to talk about something really important, gang. we got to talk about, I don't know, hmm, thinking globally. And drinking locally and supporting the craft beer movement. Hell, if you're up in Cleveland, Ohio, and you're drinking some Great Lakes beer like these folks are on their porch during the blackout of 2003, hell, you're supporting the craft beer movement and drinking locally up there. You're doing your part, guys. Fighting that macro bullshit each and every day. Hell yes. So, until the next DJ's Brew Tube, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And <sighs> I gotta calm, relax, Russian Imperial. Stout Jones Phil. Peace out.